Okay, the final item of business this evening is a member's business debate on motion 12612 in the name of Clare Hockey on WASPY PHSO final report published. Uh, this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I'd invite members wishing to participate to press the request to speak buttons. And I invite uh, Claire Hawkey to open the debate uh, around seven minutes, Ms Hawkey. Thank you, President Officer. And I'm, I'm delighted to have secured today's debate on the WASPI campaign and the UK Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman final report. And my thanks to my colleagues from my own party and the Green Party who supported the motion. Established in 2015, the WASPI campaign was set up to protest against the way in which the state pension age for men and women was equalised. The 1995 Conservative Government's State Pension Act included plans to increase women's state pension age from 60 to 65 so that it was the same as that of men. Legislation passed in 2007 introduced a series of increases, starting with the state pension age of 66 between 2024 and 2026, and ending with an increase to 68 between 2044 and 2046. The Tory and Lib Dem coalition government then introduced the Pensions Act 2011, which accelerated the equalisation of women's state pension age by 18 months and brought forward the increase in men's and women's state pension age to 66 by five and a half years. These changes impacted an estimated 3.8 million women born in the 1950s, including over 5,000 in the Rutherglen Westminster constituency, with many having had little or no notice of the changes, leaving it too late for them to do any proper financial planning. I know MSPs of all parties will have heard from constituents on the impact the changes had on them. For example, those who took early retirement due to their own ill health or that of their partner, who had to go back to work as they belatedly found out they were not able to receive their pension for years later than anticipated, or people who had to sell their homes or who lost all of their savings. But it's not just the financial hardship, but the emotional distress and health issues it caused too. Presiding officer, the tenacity and commitment and resolve of the WASPI women has been quite remarkable. I had the privilege of attending a WASPI march in Glasgow in September 2016, and I've been delighted to work closely with some of the organisers ever since. My constituent, Anne Potter, has been one of the key figures in the campaign here in Scotland, having set up the Glasgow, Lanarkshire, Dumbartonshire and Renfrewshire WASPI branch in 2016. Anne and other activists, um, including Cathy MacDonald and Rosie Dixon, have organised protests, handed out countless flyers, spoke to print and broadcast media, lobbied politicians at party conferences and much, much more. They've kept the WASPI case at the forefront of politicians' minds ever since. And they've done all this despite setback after setback, either through the intransigence of the UK government, delays to the PHSO report and defeats in court. Throughout it all, the WASPI campaigns have always known they were right and that they suffered an injustice. Presiding officer, uh, after around five years, the PHSO published their final report into the issue. And in the summary of the complaint and the Ombudsman's findings, they referred to 2004 research that the DWP was considering in August 2005. This showed overall more than half of women affected by the 1995 Pensions Act did not know their state pension age was 65 or between 60 and 65. The Ombudsman also found the UK Government failed to give due weight to relevant considerations whereby the research recommended information should be appropriately targeted. Despite having identified there was more it could do, the UK Government failed to provide the public with as much full information as possible. Additionally, the Ombudsman's report found that the DWP did not act promptly enough on its November 2006 proposal to write directly to affected women to tell them about the changes to the state pension age. And it failed to give due weight to how much time had already been lost since the 1995 Pensions Act. Presiding officer, the WASPI position had finally been vindicated with the publication of the PHSO's report. The maladministration by the UK government has now been confirmed, and the Ombudsman has been clear that a compensation scheme must be established. But like the WASPI women themselves, I'm deeply disappointed in the level of compensation that is being suggested. 
The PHSO recommends compensation lev uh, levels uh, equivalent to level four on its banding scale, and that's between £1,000 and £2,950. Compensating all women born in the 1950s at the level four range would involve spending between £3.5 billion and £10.5 billion pounds of public funds. However, this amount must be considered in the context that the UK Government has saved £181.4 billion pounds purely by raising the state pension age of these women. Presiding officer, there has been dither and delay from the Tories over many years. They have had years to resolve this injustice without forcing women to go to the Ombudsman or to courts for resolution, and they have had months to respond in full to the PHSO report. But just like the Tory government have failed the WASPI women, the same is true for Labour. For years, scores of Labour MPs and MSPs have been vocal in their support of the WASPI campaign. <clears throat> Labour politicians have happily posed for photographs, signed pledges, offered warm words, but at the point when they should be honouring their promises and paying what's due, they've reneged on the deal. Not one word in their manifesto about the WASPI campaign. Nothing from Sir Keir Stammer or Anna Sarwar. They've backtracked and they've U-turned, like they have on numerous policy positions in recent months. A whiff of power in number 10, and they've abandoned the women who had trusted them to fulfil their promises. And I'll take your intervention now, Mr Kane. Briefly, Paula Kane. It, the member is uh, inaccurate in saying that there has been no words from Keir Starmer. When Keir Starmer was in Scotland launching those first six steps for a Labour government, he said that it is duty, the duty is upon the next government to look at the report and to act upon it. So he clearly outlined that that is what is important. Clear More warm words there from the Labour Party and no action. Exactly. Presiding yeah. officer, Labour have abandoned the WASPy women, but we in the SNP never will. We have been there with them from the very beginning and we will be with them until they have received fair compensation. Even as long ago as June 2016, the SNP Westminster Group commissioned a report on potential financial remedies for WASPy women. However, it was ignored. And prior to the UK Parliament dissolving, my SNP colleague at Westminster, Alan Brown, lodged a bill which would have set up a framework to pay their fair and fast compensation. And our manifesto, which was published today, states we will stand up for WASPy women by pressing the UK Government to deliver full, fast, fair compensation for women who have been wronged by pension inequality. Sadly, around 290,000 WASPy women have died since the start of the campaign. Another dies every 13 minutes. Presiding officer, the WASPy scandal has gone on for too long. The PHSO report is clear. The WASPy women have been the victims of maladministration and they are entitled to compensation. So what are Labour and the Tories going to do? What are they waiting for? Let's give the WASPy women what they are due and give it to them as a priority in the new Westminster Parliament. Thank you. Thank you. We move to the open debate. I call first Finlay Carson to be followed by Ruth Maguire. Uh, up to four minutes, Mr Carson. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. I, I think it is fair to assume that we all support the WASPI campaign in one way or another, and I believe it is only right that the Parliament has come together on this issue. They deserve justice, and few can deny the fact. Sadly, some people, as we have heard uh, Claire uh, Hockey mention, that have started out in this journey are no longer with us. And those who bravely fought this battle have not seen justice, which is regrettable to say the absolute least. But once again, it is crucial that we what we consider here in, in relation uh, to the, the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman report and, and the, the wider campaign. And the recommendations are very clear, including financial compensation for women who are affected by the change and the maladministration, which has been clearly identified in the report. It has taken five years for the PHSO to conclude its report, and it is only fit and proper that the recommendations are taken on board and, crucially, acted upon by the next UK Government. As both the First Minister and the Scottish Conservative leader, Douglas Ross, agreed only last week, this is not and should not be about a political issue, and it is very sad that the contribution from the, 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 the debate instigator has, has decided to concentrate on that, because there is absolutely no reason uh, why the SNP govern government couldn't step in and, and take action. So it's disappointing that this, is, this debate, which is about the WASPy women, has been turned into a political debate. Uh, no, I won't take an intervention. Thank you very much. The, the, the WASPy... 
I, I'll take an intervention from Clare Hockey. Clare Hockey. Thank, I thank Finlay Carson um, for uh, labelling me an instigator. I'm quite happy to be an instigator on behalf of the WASPI campaign. <laughs> Pensions are fully reserved to Westminster. This is a mess that Westminster has made. It's not for this Parliament to clear up the mess there. And the WASPI women have been very clear in their campaign. They want all women across the UK to be compensated. Finlay Carson. Uh, thank you for the intervention, but I think you didn't answer that there is no reason why the Scottish Government couldn't take action. There's nothing to there is nothing to prevent that happening. So it's all very well you putting things in your manifesto where you're expecting someone else to deliver it, where you could Do stand up and deliver, uh, the, the SNP could stand up, or the Scottish Government could stand up and deliver support for these WASPy women. But I'm going to move away from the political argument, because that's not uh, what my uh, contribution is about tonight. I think it's, uh, it's uh, a testament to the WASPy women who have successfully managed to get people from across the political spectrum to listen to their issues and concerns. And crucially, the PHSO remains non-partisan and has listened carefully to them and accepted that there was a maladministration. And it is important to remember that the report could not look at whether it was right to change the state pension age for women. And no WASPy women that I have encountered have been against equalisation, but rather about how it was communicated. When the state pension was introduced in the 1940s, at a differential age, 65 for, women and six, eh, for men and 60 for women. Then, of course, in 1993, the then Chancellor Ken Clark announced that the government would equalise the state pension age at 50, eh, 65 over a 10-year period starting in 2010. A year later, the coalition government accelerated that equalisation while at the same time raising the age to 66. This meant that the state pension age for women would reach 65 in November 2018 and then increase to 66 would apply by October 2020. Now, I have maintained all along that the government let many people down by right respectively changing the rules and that effectively threatened many people's retirement plans and threw them into chaos. And as a party who uh, looked to, to individuals to be uh, responsible for their answers, that, that it, it certainly was uh, more than regrettable. The Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman since released its findings from the investigation into how the Department of Work and Pensions communicated the changes. And it's concluded that in 2005, the DWP failed to make a responsible and reasonable decision about targeting information to the women affected by the changes, and that was a, a, a maladministration. The DWP proposed uh, writing to women individually to tell them about the changes to state pension age but failed to act promptly. Unfortunately, PHSO has made it clear that it is not able to recommend that the DWP reimburse lost pensions. This would be outside its legal limit. In conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, this should be one of the first things to be tackled by the next UK Government, regardless of which party triumphs, including which level of compensation should be paid out. Thank you. I now call Ruth Maguire to be followed by Paula Kane. Up to four minutes, Ms. Maguire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As many as 3.8 million women were given the news that their state pension was going to increase from 60 to 67 uh, to 66, excuse me, just as they were about to retire, too late to do any proper financial planning. This maladministration warrants not only an apology but also action. This is an injustice for which women must be promptly and properly compensated by the UK government. I congratulate Claire Hockey on securing cross-party support for this important debate. Claire has consistently spoken up for the women so wronged by this maladministration, both inside this parliament and out with in her community. I will also wish to congratulate the WASPy women themselves on their campaign so far. I was really pleased to meet with Ayrshire WASPy campaigners outside this parliament last month or so um, as they rallied. But it was terribly sad to hear that not all the women I had previously met are still with us. Their loss compounds the huge sense of injustice that's felt. What was good to hear was that the women felt well supported by their Ayrshire MPs, in particular Patricia Gibson, who's represented North Ayrshire and Arran with distinction. And I know it's not only WASPy women that are hoping that she is re-elected. The SNP will never abandon the WASPy women. We demand justice and compensation for them and will not rest until they have it. Claire Hockey's motion rightly highlights cross-party commitments to delivering justice for them. And I know that there's cross-party support in this Scottish Parliament. 
Unfortunately, the action does have to come from elsewhere. Now, I could make arguments about fairness and equality for women and note how um, a similar cohort of men would never have been treated like this. Or I could talk about the impact of this injustice on families and children, children missing out on quality time with their grands, adult children missing out on practical support with their children, and ageing parents missing out on support and care. But I do think these types of arguments would likely fall on deaf ears for those who as we need to take action. In my judgment, any potential UK Prime Minister, whether he comes with a red tie or a blue one, um, any UK Prime Minister who will continue with a two-child benefit cap and a rape clause will not be particularly persuadable on arguments of fairness for women and families. So let me make an argument for righting this wrong and awarding fair and fast compensation to the 1950s women that hopefully will be valued by an incoming Prime Minister. Fast and fair compensation could result in millions going into local economies. Figures to be provided to me by Ayrshire Waspie women from the House of Commons Library briefing paper on the topic show that if the 15,000 women in Ayrshire who have been deprived of a full six years of their state pension entitlement were compensated by only a quarter of what was owed to them, this would result in £150 million being spent in local communities. In our local economies, this means benefits for business and, in turn, employment and training opportunities. Women told me that being able to retire would help, take up and help them take up volunteering roles, contributing to the community and personal wellbeing. They spoke of the employment opportunities opening up for younger people as they retired and also of the health and well-being implications of retiral and the value in being able to spend more time with grandchildren and supporting parents to work, bringing more money into households and easing money pressures and worries. There are clear economic and social benefits for righting this wrong. And in addition, over 60% would go back into the Treasury in income tax, national insurance, VAT from women and local businesses. So the net cost to the UK Government of doing the right thing is substantially lower than the gross cost. Presiding Officer. Thank you. Just a, a gentle reminder around electioneering in the uh, Chamber. Um, and with that, I call Paul O'Kane uh, to be followed by Rona Mackay. Up to four minutes, Mr O'Kane. I am very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I welcome the opportunity uh, that we have in this chamber once again to uh, debate these issues and to highlight um, the campaign of WASPy Women. Uh, as I laid out when we last debated uh, this issue at the beginning of May in government time, uh, Labour have welcomed the publication of the PHSO report. And the report uh, that has been produced is detailed and seriously and rightly should command the attention of us all. And I think we've already started to hear uh, the desire for people to focus on this report and to look at it in a, a lot of detail. Uh, since our last debate on the issue, however, it appears that um, the report perhaps did not actually command the full attention of uh, the current UK Conservative Government, because over two months passed between the publication of that report in March and then the Prime Minister's decision to call a general election in July. And during that period, the Conservative Government, despite calls from campaigners and opposition parties to bring forward a full statement and response to that report, uh, have utterly failed uh, to do so. Um, the power has been theirs to respond, and yet they have chosen uh, not to, and to kick that issue into the long uh, grass. Uh, and I think we've already heard that articulated tonight, but I, I don't think it is right that they did not take that opportunity to respond whilst they had uh, the access to the information that sits within the Treasury and the DWP. Um, it is, of course, now for the next UK Government, following this general election, to carefully consider that report's uh, recommendations in full. And if Labour are fortunate enough to be elected, we will work to give the report proper consideration and continue, as we have done uh, from the start, to listen respectfully to the women involved in this injustice. Because I do think we have to recognise this is an injustice, and I think we've heard that articulated uh, by members and colleagues this evening. Um, and I think particularly Ruth Maguire's comments about the injustice to women in particular, uh, I'm very conscious speaking as a man, um, the, 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 the imbalance and um, the, the, the real challenge there is in terms of trying to achieve that better equality. So I think that's a very important uh, point that we should reflect on. Um, 
I, and I think it's actually the campaigners that we need to um, speak of tonight as well, because they have been tireless and ferocious in trying to highlight uh, these inequalities and to, to set them right. And I want to take my opportunity, as uh, I did in May, uh, to thank them and to thank everyone who contributed to the PHSO report. Indeed, I recently met with uh, WASPI campaigners in Renfrewshire and in Verclyde, and we had a very constructive dis uh, discussion about the issues that are in the report, uh, the redress that they would like to see, and indeed what the next steps might be for any incoming government. I think it's clear that there are a number of challenges. Um, we have not had access to all of the information, as I've said, that sits within the Treasury and the DWP. I think it's important that any response to this report uh, that looks at a compensation scheme has to be agreed with those who are impacted and affected. We have to ensure that it commands the confidence of those who have been affected. We have to make sure that it meets the aspirations of those who are seeking redress and who perhaps are seeking different levels of redress. And we have to ensure, of course, that um, it can be properly and fully funded and that it doesn't become a commitment that is made and is then not delivered properly. Because we know that there are significant challenges, not only in terms of WASPI women, but also in terms of righting the injustices like um, infected blood, like the Horizon Post Office scandal. We know that the Windrush generation have not yet been properly compensated either. So there is a huge amount of uh, work within an incoming government entry to be dealt with, which quite frankly hasn't been dealt with by this current uh, Conservative government uh, and has not been been, uh, addressed. So it is clear to me that um, it may take time and that there will be a competing interest, but it is important that we uh, consider this report in full, have the government respond. If Labour are fortunate enough to be that government, that is what we will do. We will do it hand in hand with those who be women, and we will ensure that we do not make promises that we cannot keep, and that we ensure that justice is done and there is redress. And I'm very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you. I now call Rona Mackay to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Up to four minutes, Ms Mackay. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank my colleague Claire Hockey for her passionate campaigning on behalf of the WASPI campaign group and for bringing this motion forward for debate. Um, presiding officer, women born in the 1950s have been cheated out of their money by the UK government. It's as simple as that. Uh, money that's not a benefit is money that's rightfully theirs and they've worked hard for for many years. I first spoke in a debate on this issue in, the, in this, this chamber in 2017 and here we are again. Women still waiting, empty promises being made. Claire Hockey's motion says it all. This is a long-running, depressing saga, which I believe deserves the same focus as the sub-postmaster scandal. But the blame for this one can be laid firm, fairly and squarely at the door of the DWP. The PHSO report clearly states this, and crucially, um, that the women deserve compensation now. As we've heard across the chamber today, around 3.8 uh, million women have been impacted. I'm a WASPI woman myself, but I'm in an extremely, extremely fortunate position to be working and still earning. Unlike the thousands of women in Scotland and throughout the UK who were cheated out of their pension, I certainly do not feel the impact as they do. But the bottom line is, women of all backgrounds and means have been cheated out of their money. They've experienced severe financial loss, which has had a negative impact on their health, emotional well-being and home life as a result. Sadly, around 270,000 women have not survived to see justice. Presiding officer, unlike the Labour Party and the Tory Party, the SNP in government will not rest until WASPI women receive the overdue justice they deserve. Warm words and posing for pictures does not cut it. The UK parties must put their money where their mouth is. Indeed, the incoming Labour Chancellor Rachel Reeves has confirmed there is no commitment to payments in the Labour manifesto, saying the party had not set out any money for this. She said, we won't put forward anything that's not fully costed and fully funded, and I haven't set out any money for this. Presiding officer, that is shameful. The Scottish Government has welcomed the findings of the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman's report, highlighting the damning communication failures of the UK Government. But after years of promises made by Labour and Tory members, those parties are both now refusing to accept the report's recommendations to fully compensate the women who have been impacted. That's not just disappointing, but a betrayal of every single WASPI woman. These women deserve so much better. They deserve full, fair and fast compensation. Presiding officer, the amount recommended by the PSHO report is unrealistic and, and downright insulting. Many women have lost upwards of £40,000 of the pension they would have had if they had retired at 60 as planned. 
Now, this might not matter to the people of inherited wealth who make these decisions or highly paid civil servants with huge pension pots, but for millions of hard-working women in Scotland and throughout the UK, it is devastating. The WASP campaigners agree with the equalisation of pensions. However, the core of the campaign's argument is the unfair and unjust way these changes were implemented, as we now know. Currently, there are hundreds of WASPy local groups throughout Scotland with courageous campaigners refusing to give up and be demoralised. They will not stop until justice is done, and the SNP will be with them every step of the way in their fight for justice. Thank you. Thank you. I now call Maggie Chapman to be followed by Marie McNair. Up to four minutes, Ms Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Every 13 minutes, a WASPy woman dies. Every 13 minutes, a woman who might have lost several years' worth of her pension, maybe as much as £42,000, dies without justice. So I am very grateful to Claire Hockey for her important motion today and for securing this debate. Most of all, I'd like to thank the women, women like Linda Carmichael and Lorraine Ray in Aberdeen, whose positive and determined campaigning is celebrated and supported today. Thank you for all you have done and all you continue to do. Scottish Greens stand in solidarity with you, and we will do so until you receive the apology and compensation you deserve. Because this is a debate about justice, justice for the women directly affected, for their families and their wider communities, and it's about pension justice for everyone, because the injustices suffered by the WASPy women mirror other pension injustices, the wider gender pension gap, the devastating loss of pension benefits imposed by unilateral scheme changes, and excessive retirement ages for demanding and dangerous professions, such as prison officers and emergency workers. It's a debate, too, about equality. The women whose voices we echo today do not object to pension equalisation, they might justifiably do so, remembering the gross unfairness which characterised much of their own careers. They might point out, many of them, that their wages were fractions of their male counterparts, that they were barred from company pension schemes, obliged to choose between work and motherhood, even marriage, that they hit their heads upon glass ceilings and are expected to live longer, with greater care needs sustained by significantly smaller pension pots. What they do object to, and rightly so, as the UK Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman has confirmed in this final report, is the way in which this equalisation was carried out. For that was far from equal and far from just. It was unjust in the speed with which it was rolled out, with the UK Government ignoring expert advice. It was unjust in the lack of proper consultation. And it was unjust in the abject failure to inform women of this major change in their own circumstances, this fundamental disruption of their life and retirement plans. Many women have suffered severe financial loss as a result of this failure. Some have been able to find work, albeit not the work they would have chosen, not at the wages they would have chosen, not at the times they would have chosen. Others, bearing their own health problems or committed to caring for others, have not even had those minimal opportunities for mitigation. Families have suffered. Aging parents, husbands, wives, partners, children and grandchildren. Communities have suffered, losing activists, volunteers and the pensions that would have been spent in local businesses and social enterprise. We have all, to some extent, suffered from yet another example of government incompetence slapdash policy-making and indifference to the lives and well-being of the people it is supposed to serve. In the last fortnight of this UK Government's venal plummet from power, we don't expect very much. They could surprise us. They could discover on the way out a forgotten ounce of common decency, enough to fuel an apology and a decent level of compensation. We'll certainly expect the next occupiers to do so. When the WASPy women started school, like so many of us, they were told to sit down on their allocated chairs, to listen to the teacher and not to speak without putting up their hand. But now, with a lifetime of wisdom and experience, they know that sometimes you shouldn't sit down and you shouldn't shut up. But, presiding officer, I will sit down and shut up soon, but only to hear more voices of solidarity, because I and the Scottish Greens will continue to stand and shout with the WASPy women as loud as we can in their urgent call for equality and justice. Thank you. Thank you. I now call Marie McNair to be followed by Beatrice Wisher. Up to four minutes, Ms McNair. 
Thank you, President Officer. Can I thank Claire Hohe for securing this important debate and a commitment to justice. How we treat our pensioners should define our country instead of forcing them into poverty. Waspy women work tirelessly throughout their lives only to find themselves facing a dreadful delay to receiving their pension. And this has left many struggling to make ends meet and facing financial uncertainty at a time when they should be able to retire after decades of work. It is estimated relating to my constituency more than 4,700 women in eastern Bartonshire and over 6,000 in western Bartonshire have been affected by the changes to the state pension age. The final Ombudsman report is clear on the failures of successive UK governments and the DWP. This comprehensive investigation found that thousands of women have been affected by the DWP's failure to adequately inform them that the state pension age had changed. The report is clear. These women are owed compensation, but the amount suggested of between £2,950 per person is a paltry sum and it would echo the WASP women's calls for any UK government to consider higher levels of compensation that reflects the decades of mistreatment. It is shameful the women have still not received a formal apology or explanation from the government, and it is even more worrying that the PHSO Chief Executive has significant concerns that the DWP will fail to act on the findings. But the truth is, there will be no change under a Westminster regime. It is a matter of days until there is a new UK government, likely to be a Labour one. And in contrast, it is a matter of days ago that in this chamber, Paul O'Kane said Labour supports the delivery of justice for WASP women. Katie Clark said the, new, the next UK government must deliver justice and compensation to those women. Well, here we are. The manifestos are out, the real and the fictitious. No honest decency and integrity. And I've searched the Labour manifesto. There's not one mention of the courageous WASP women. And I even played the game and searched the fictitious Scottish Labour branch office manifesto. And no surprise, following orders, there's no mention there too. Make no mistakes. If you're a WASP woman, the Labour Party and Tories are not on your side. The Labour Party have decided that WASP women don't matter to them. By contrast, only a few days ago, our First Minister, John Swinney, reaffirmed the SNP's position and concrete commitment to support of full, fair and fast compensation for WASP women. It is clear that the SNP will champion their right to fast and fair compensation. Okay. Okay. I am very grateful to the member for taking an intervention. Um, and, you know, I am disappointed by the way she has chosen to characterise this debate, uh, because I think you know, it is clear uh, in what I said that actually we need to consider the report. But I would ask her, just in terms of her manifesto commitment, has she attached a cost? Has she costed how much the compensation would, would cost, first of all? And secondly, how that would be paid for? Uh, just, just a fair question, I think. What do you mean, yeah? On that point, no, I haven't. But I th I'm surely, though, that you know the fact that it's not in your manifesto, you must be absolutely shocked. There's no mention of WASP women in the commitment you made just the other week. Sorry, presiding officer, I'll get back on my speech. Despite constant setbacks, WASP women have remained steadfast in their resolve. In the face of injustice, they have shown determination and courage. They continue to push on for the estimated 270,000 women who have sadly passed away without seeing compensation. I know this firsthand, having met many of them, the fantastic WASP women, in particular the coordinator of the Western Bartonshire Women Against State Pension and Justice Group, Liz Daly, a selfless, committed and resilient woman. Time is unfortunately not on their side, so we need to see immediate action on this. These women are here to stay, and we in the SNP will keep fighting for them, because frankly these women have done enough. They have fought for this for nearly a decade. They have done the work and they have been vindicated by the Ombudsman report. So it is time for the Westminster to get to work. We need to see the next UK Government compensate immediately. The WASP women have asked for a commitment within 100 days, so I hope that Labour will commit to that. Um, or stand aside and let the SNP Government do just that. Let real change happen. Our WASP women must get the justice they deserve, if you are really honest. And finally, I call Beatrice Wishart, the open, last of the open uh, debate speakers, up to four minutes. Ms Wishart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to extend my thanks to Claire Ho Hockey, too, for bringing this important chamber to the debate. As the motion highlights, the UK Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman published its final report into the women's state pension age and associated issues in March this year. The Ombudsman made a finding of failings by the Department for Work and Pensions and ruled that the women affected are owed compensation. 
I have supported the Women Against State Pension Inequality or WASP campaign for as long as almost the campaign began. I am a WASP woman, I should perhaps confess that too. Um, as the Deputy Convener for the Cross Party Group on WASPI, I have had the privilege of meeting with many campaigners from across Scotland and, of course, from my own constituency too, and I pay tribute to them all. They have been working tirelessly for years to fight for justice. Their courage and sheer dogged determination to never give up deserves our um, admiration. Many women have faced poverty and financial hardship as a result of the failings highlighted by the Ombudsman. I am pleased that the long overdue report recognised that WASPI women deserve compensation for the financial hardships they have suffered as a result of the DWP's maladministration. It is shocking that the Conservative UK Government did not accept the DWP maladministration. There has been plenty of time for the findings to be considered and for a compensation scheme to be put in place. Presiding officer, the consequences of delay are stark. As Liberal Democrat Wendy Chamberlain Said in, a chamber, said in a debate in Westminster, WASPI women are dying, dying without the DWP admitting to their errors, without any acknowledgement of the impact this has had, without compensation, without resolution. They feel that the government is waiting for them to die, for the problem to literally cease to exist. It's quite clearly no way to treat people, and I cannot help but feeling there's underlying ageism and sexism playing a role in the government response. It is shameful no compensation has been put in place and the incoming UK Government must do better. The new UK Government must accept the Ombudsman's findings, acknowledge the maladministration and swiftly set up a fair compensation scheme for the women affected. Thank you. Thank you. I now invite Co Cab Stewart to respond to the debate. Minister, uh, up to four, seven minutes, please. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Scottish Government has been consistent in our calls for the UK Government to immediately right the historic wrongs suffered by the WASPI women. And I want to congratulate those campaigners who have relentlessly pursued justice. They should be commended and applauded for their tireless work. I would also like to thank Claire Hawhey for securing this debate and for her long-standing campaigning on behalf of the WASPI women. When the UK Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman report was published in March, we immediately called on the UK Government to take action quickly and compensate the women impacted. The report identifies the DWP's failure to act promptly in writing to the women impacted by the changes in state pension age and calls for compensation to rectify that maladministration. It is vital that whoever forms the next UK Government delivers the compensation package as soon as possible. They should listen to the WASPI women's calls for comprehensive compensation, taking into account the financial hardship suffered. And I am aware that previous debates on this issue have been largely consensual. However, I understand frustrations expressed in the Chamber tonight on behalf of the WASPI women. The PHSO report recommends that the DWP compensate women born in the 1950s between uh, £1,000 and £2,950. Whilst this is welcome, this Government believes that compensation should go further and supports Alan Brand's bill, which called upon the UK Government to publish a compensation framework for WASPI women set at £3,000 to £10,000 or more. Something the WASPI campaigners also feel would be a fairer outcome given the wider financial hardship this devastating policy has caused, we were also pleased to see that a debate was secured by uh, Patricia Gibson MP on the 16th of May, resulting in the UK Parliament calling on the Government to deliver prompt compensation to the women impacted. As Marie McNair and Beatrice Wishart have also noted, that unfortunately, prior to the dissolution of Parliament, the UK Government had failed to make a clear commitment to delivering that compensation, pledging only to consider the PHSO report. 
This stance is repeated in the Conservative manifesto, and there is no mention of WASPI at all in the Labour manifesto. Finlay Carson uh, did talk about this becoming a political issue, uh, but the WASPI women, it's undeniable, do feel abandoned, and he knows fine well that uh, state pension is a reserved matter which uh, limits what we can do within a devolved competence as a Scottish Government. It is up to the UK Government to take action on this. And to be clear, the findings of the PHSO and the compensation recommendation is because the DWP mishandled the communication of the equalisation of state pension age. And as I said, this clearly puts the responsibility squarely at the door of the UK Government to right their own wrongs and compensate the women who were unfairly affected by this maladministration. Um, Maggie Chapman also talked about her continued commitment to put this injustice right. Women are already fighting an uphill battle in terms of pension savings equality without the UK Government making the situation more difficult. The UK has one of the worst gender pay gaps in the OECD, and that's from 2023 statistics. Research by the Pensions Policy Institute found that for women to retire with the same pension savings as men, they would need to work at an extra 19 years. Um, and my colleague uh, Ruth Maguire talked about the gender issues that have been, you know, that are clearly there around the WASPI uh, campaign. Clearly, the equalisation of pension age does not mean pension equality. So it's time to let, uh, stop letting the women down and take action. Rona Mackay also talked about the WASPI women who have sadly passed away without receiving justice. And this cannot continue. In conclusion, presiding officer, the WASPI campaign has been a long and taxing ordeal for the women involved. The report by the PHSO is a glimmer of light at the end of a very long tunnel. I am hoping that the incoming UK Government takes notice of the collective voices of the parties across this Parliament and the UK Parliament, and they pledge to take action on the PHSO report and finally uh, provide acknowledgement of their maladministration and, importantly, that they do the right thing by providing a fair compensation package at the earliest possible opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.